Music is awesome. But did you know it's also mathematical? So obviously music is sound. But what is sound? Sound is a wave, which is a disturbance that propagates through a medium. A slinky can provide a good demonstration. A push on one coil creates a push on the next and the next until it reaches the end of the slinky. A series of pushes and pulls results in sections of the slinky that are compressed, called compressions, and sections that are spread out, called rarefactions. rarefactions. It's the same way with sound traveling through the air. A push or pull on one molecule results in a push or pull on the next, and so on. Side note, sound doesn't have to go through the air. It actually travels faster through solids. You're usually hearing it through the air, but as long as there's a medium for it to travel through, sound will continue to exist. That's why you can hear through walls. Now, sound waves are often illustrated like this, because it's easier to draw. Just keep in mind, sound waves don't actually move up and down like that. The crests represent the compressions, and the troughs represent the rarefactions. The distance between two matching points on the wave is called the wavelength. The number of wavelengths that hit your ear in a certain amount of time is called the frequency. So many definitions in so little time. That means we'll have to give them at a high frequency. Because... Okay. okay. Frequency is especially important in music because it determines a note's pitch. For example, a frequency of 100 hertz sounds like this. As we increase the frequency, the note gets higher. Side note, hertz are the unit of frequency. It just means per second. With sound, the frequency in hertz is the number of wavelengths that hit your ear in a second. It's not a measure of how painful a sound is, although if there's a lot of hertz, there might be a lot of hertz. When you play a note on a piano, a little hammer inside the piano hits a special string which begins to vibrate at a certain frequency. For this note, middle C, that frequency is about 262 hertz. That means the string is vibrating back and forth 262 times every second. You may have noticed that some notes sound better together than others. This has to do with how their frequencies are related. Frequencies that are related by simple fractions tend to sound better together. Let's use the example of middle C again, which has a frequency of 262 hertz. Let's half the frequency. We get 131 hertz, which is C an octave down. Doubling the frequency gives us C an octave higher. You can hear how these notes are related. Let's try some more simple fractions. 3 halves of 262 is 393. This is a G. 5 fourths of 262 is an E. Now we've found the fractional relationships for a major chord. All the other notes are at least somehow related, and it's easy to look up their individual frequencies. We can use this information to create our own musical instrument. When you hit one end of a PVC pipe, it will make a certain note. By altering the length of the pipe, we can change the note created. The wavelength of the sound created will be approximately double the length of the pipe. Here's the equation we found. The length of the pipe equals speed of sound divided by the frequency you want times 2 plus the radius of the pipe. The speed of sound is usually about 13 and a half thousand inches per second. Let's say we wanted to produce a low, low C with a frequency of 65.4 hertz using pipe with a radius of about an inch. We can plug the numbers into our equation. The length of pipe equals 13,500 divided by 65.4 times two plus one, which is approximately 104 inches or eight feet, eight inches. So we need a PVC pipe with a length of approximately 8 feet and 8 inches to produce this low, low C. We can repeat this process for any note we want. Now we can play just about anything. Actually, because of copyright law, we probably can't play most things. Oh. Instead of cutting several different pipes to different lengths, we decided to make one with an adjustable length. But there's one major weakness to that design. You can only play one note at once, and it takes time to switch between notes. With a lot of practice, I'm sure we can eliminate most of that time, though. But there's one thing that beats practice. That's right. Editing. You might think of math as just a bunch of numbers and equations, but these numbers and equations can be used to describe and understand almost anything, including music.